And welcome into a Valentine's Day edition of the Backstage Pass. It's Monday, February 14th. I hope Cupid, uh, I guess, shot the arrow toward your loved one and your loved one's out there too at the same time, girlfriend or aunt or wife or someone in your family. And happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there for this uh, special edition. Of course, uh, just a week out now, we'll be in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, Jeff's already there. I'll be there joining the team there with Kirsty Krause. And of course, just a great, great group of shows coming up over those three days at the Omni Hotel, February 23rd to 25th. Uh, Shannon Doa and, of course, a whole lot more. Uh, Callie Tucker is going to join us, the niece of Tanya Tucker and John Barry, and looking forward to a lot of coverage there in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. CRS 2022, presented by Bangtail uh, Whiskey. And, of course, thanks to our sponsors out there, Bangtail Whiskey, MitchMax.com, and Hank Jr. Productions. Uh, back here, yours truly, with Jeff McMahon on the Backstage Pass. And pleased to welcome in a uh, seventh generation grain and cattle ranch farmer. She grew up knowing about hard work, and it reflects in her music. Uh, Callie Twistleman joins us here on the show. How are you doing, Callie? I'm great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Had a little technical difficulty there at the beginning. So we appreciate our audience uh, tuning in there, kind of bearing with us. If you got comments along as we go through the broadcast, uh, feel free to, uh, to tune in, leave comments. We'll try to put them on the screen there and ask uh, Ask away those questions. Hey, tell me about that growing up there in, in Cali, because I love the state out there so much. I got a chance to go just a couple of years ago and uh, kind of live up San Diego, Los Angeles. And of course, congratulations to the Rams for winning the Super Bowl uh, mm -hmm. just yesterday. But it seems like country music has been infused in you for a long time. It's kind of like the fiber of your being uh, growing up there, um, you know, on the ranch too, is the, the value of hard work. People talk about that to me. I grew up in the country, so I know all about what that means. Tell people about that and how that kind of blended over and and now is is, is really resonating with your music. Yes, I grew up on the central coast of California on a seven generation grain and cattle ranch. I know a lot of people think California is not ranches or country. They always think, oh, LA, but no, there's lots of country over there. Yeah. And <laughs> so just growing up on the ranch, I was you know, the country living. And then I always loved singing. I was like singing since I could talk. And my mom was a local country singer in a band um, locally. And that's where I kind of got the bug to try it myself. And yeah, just kept going and finally moved so, to Nashville. So did your mom, um, did she at some point have some of the same aspirations you do? Did she encourage you? Did she discourage you? Because she had some insights. What what does that mean? She had some experience. She knew what you were walking into. Yes. No, she, my dad was bound and determined. He was going to make her a star before I was born. <laughs> yeah. And they went to Nashville and took a trip and just, she found out she needed to be a songwriter and she wasn't really into the songwriting world. So she went home and they decided they're just going to have a family. And it was that, okay. but they're really excited and they're very supportive of me. I think they're kind of, living through me in a way so right really cool tell me about uh because i love this and i love rodeos when i get a chance to go to them jeff if we find one there next week at a rodeo we'll, we'll definitely uh like i said kind of kind of yeah. run to that venue uh roping calf uh being on a rodeo too at the same time uh the hard work we talked about there on the ranch but at the same time learning that hard work and bringing it over to your to, to your music now um rodeos seem to be big in, in california i know they're here in texas no doubt uh, what was that experience like being around rodeos and participating in them and calf roping and all that good stuff yeah well, i grew up around that lifestyle obviously so i was it was inevitable that i was gonna be in the rodeos too and that was also one of my dreams as well as singing a while ago but um i always wanted to make it to the nfr one day but they only have barrel racing and i'm more of a roper so that didn't work out but yeah it was a <laughs> cool lifestyle i started riding around like three years old and then in high school i did the high school rodeos and entered all the events mm -hmm. they have in that and yes yeah, so. well so um I know that, uh, first of all, for, for our audience, just in case they don't know, NFR, National Finals Rodeo. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I wonder, uh, knowing that you've got that background, I notice very quickly in your photographs, I'm, I'm always very quick to take note of a young lady in a cowboy hat when she has it kind of very daintily on the back of her head so it doesn't mess up <laughs> her hair and stuff. And I was, I was seeing yours and it's like, boom. You know, oh, yeah. pull that sucker down like i mean I is that supposed to be <laughs> yeah 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 so i'm i'm just wondering um 
do you are, are you scrutinizing them the way I do? Because I will like fake, uh, fake, I try fake, not fake, to. fake. Yes. <laughs> That's kind of what my song Cowboy is about, too. Like people who try to be one or dress right. like one, but they're want to be kind of. Yeah. But, I mean, if they're going to bring more attention to that way of life, I guess it's a good thing. Sure, sure. <laughs> Wearing that cowboy hat proud and, and knowing the roots that you came from. But I'll tell you, let's go ahead and play one here uh, on the show, too, of course. And uh, yeah. definitely, I, I encourage people to go get a, a great EP called Closure, uh, which came out last year, but still some great songs on there, too, at the same time. Of course, Cowboy, the single that came out uh, last year. It's uh, Cali Twistleman. It's presented by Bangtail Whiskey, BitchMax.com. And our good friends over at Hank Jr. Productions. Uh, Cali, it's all yours. Yeah, I'm going to play you a cowboy. There we go. He's got it all figured out Everything he wants in this life He's gonna get it somehow No, the boy ain't messing around Working us to dawn with callous hands His name lives on in the family land He's a cowboy, not the kind you see He's a wild boy, he's got the drive He's giving his own tail and day he dies He's a one-shot with a full hand Yeah, there ain't no denying He's a cowboy There's nothing he's gonna hide Yeah, he's an open book and you can bet He's gonna treat you right Yeah, cause he's just that type Bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Kraus, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And back here on the show, fantastic performance. Uh, she's a natural. She's like the the future of of country music, no oh, doubt. Uh, You're love. <laughs> well, you know, I, Jeff and I, we have a lot of talent on this on this show, and we're going to put you right up there uh, with some of the best that we've had too. Just a natural, Thank know how to do it. Vocals great. Uh, that's off the EP too as well. If you guys are looking for that, go check it out. Closure, which is out there. Uh, Cowboy was a second song released it as a single uh, last year too. At the same time, so. In looking at that particular tune, uh, how did you come up with that? Was it an easy write? Was it a co-write? Was it something that just felt uh, natural? Was it based on experience? Yeah, well, I wrote it originally by myself, and it was inspired by my dad originally because he grew up around him, and he's a cowboy and all that, and just living in that lifestyle. But then I took it to the studio, and me and my producer were like, we need to spice this up a little bit and put a love interest in there. So we did that and turned into what it is. <laughs> no doubt. Well, I know that um, I, I was looking around at this project and I saw a reference to, I, I guess, Two Hands, which was the first release yeah. off of this. And, and I heard it referenced as your debut single. Now, it looks like to me that maybe you reset the table or something was going on because I first knew of Hung Me on the Line. Yeah. Where you were also <laughs> doing a country girl, and I realized that you may draw a pistol on me. Maybe I'm bringing something oh, up we're not supposed to. That's funny. You go that far back. Um, but because um, then you also had what I thought was your first kind of footprint was the uh, there was an acoustic performance with a dobro of you doing uh, breathe, which I don't know if that was yeah. something you wrote or or not, but um, it looks like. It looked to me like hung on the line, the 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 video and the production of it. I'm guessing you shot a lot of that at your place as well. Yes, that was um, it. it looked like that was supposed to be like a, a start. And then you kind of regrouped and started again with this project. Is that no, sort that's of what right? Or, yeah. Like, I thought that was, you know, a debut project, but I guess technically when you restart and start partnering with other people like yeah i mean digital or label it's kind of a label i'm independent still but yeah yeah want to start you all over from scratch and kind of kind of erase what you did before which is kind of sad but i feel like that was my start technically right well i know that i mean something like like breathe which which I love because you can't hide in the production. You get to find out, you know, can you really sing? Can you really? And I know, you know, I mean, that was a number of years ago. The things I did when I was beginning, I hopefully have improved since then. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I kind of like seeing the journey. So they know where things come from. I mean, if you look at Tim McGraw's records now, they're nothing like his first record in 1994. And, and that's the same for all of those artists. So, um, yeah. um, yeah. so I guess this project is kind of your, your kind of kickoff with a new team. Is that kind of what's happening? <laughs> yeah. I moved to Nashville when I did, um, breathe and all that, that record, I was living mm -hmm. in California at the time and traveling back and forth a lot to Nashville. And then, when I finally moved here, I regrouped and found a new team, new producers. And yeah. Kind of started fresh, I guess. You'd say. And is that is that where you started? Um, uh, I don't know if he produced this whole project or not. Aaron Pierce, right? Yes, yes Aaron is, produced it all. So is that is that the team? Is that the whole the whole project? Aaron was the producer, and then just my management company, um, CTK kind of helped me guide me in the directions that I needed to go. And uh, Danny Nozell, who is also Dolly Parton's manager. Right. 
right. big influence on things. Well, and then Aaron, um, you know, it kind of it kind of makes me wonder what is to come from you musically, because I mean, to to be working with somebody like that, I mean, that's got to mean. I don't, I don't know if it's nerve wracking or reassuring or both because he's worked with Lauren Elena, but yeah. also Justin Bieber. I mean, yeah, all kinds of different genres. So. And he could take you in a lot of different, I'm sure y'all are exploring a lot of things. Yes, we are I'm working on new music too, as we speak and trying to see if I want to you know, stay in the same realm Mm -hmm. Like as for a sound, or you know, do you want to add in some more fiddle and all that? Right. Country. To, there's just so much that people don't realize goes into the producing side of it because it can sure. form the song into something completely different than the way I wrote it. So yeah. And talk, yeah, and talk about this because I love how uh, you know people, especially in this industry, have some great stories to tell from a young age. At ten, Shania Twain was a huge influence for you and. Uh, you kind of just been watching one day, caught this music video. I guess the, the bug continued to bite then. Tell me about that story with uh, seeing a Shania Twain music video and then. Yeah. Well, I would be like in my parents' living room just watching the <laughs> countdown, like it used mm -hmm. to be, you know, big thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, she came on there, and I just remember that video for, man, I feel like a woman. And all just the outfits she wore and just her voice and songs in general, I already loved. But seeing the video was what caught my eye. And I thought, I, if she could do that, I could do that too. And just <laughs> kind of made me want to do the whole country music thing. And she can dress up and wear leopard and cross over and be pop and just do it all. <laughs> hey, tell me about uh, another song off that uh, EP, A uh, Closure. Uh, two hands because I believe you guys also released that as a single and then included that on the EP uh, the backstory of that one that's a beautiful song yeah two hands is a song the story behind that one's funny because when I moved to Nashville I went to the listening room and was listening to the song suffragettes and I remember hearing this girl Kaylee Shore sing the song two hands yeah I thought, wow, that's a clever little song. Mm -hmm. Never thought anything of it. I didn't know her anything yet. And then like a year later, my team brings me the song. And they're like, this guy, he's a great producer, Aaron Pierce. And he has this song that seems like it fit you really well. Kaylee had sang it before. And she originally, she wrote the song. But um, they're like, it would fit you so good. And I listened to it. And it felt like something that I would have written myself. So I'm like, I have to cut that one. Because it's just so fun and sassy. <laughs> yes. uh, let's talk about your writing style because I know you love to uh, sing or songwriter, no doubt. Is it uh, kind of a co-write feel for you? Is it kind of a solo write sometimes, a little mix of both? And, and where do you kind of draw your inspiration when you write a tune? Yeah, I do a lot of solo writing. I've uh, been doing a little bit of co-writing here and there, like some Zooms when 2020 happened. And then um, Aaron Pierce actually signed me to a publishing deal of his that is now called monarch publishing but at the time mm -hmm. it was vintern and e1 music and so i'd go in to music row and have some co-writes there but i usually just take like an idea or something that i had and then they'll kind of put their input in and go from there but it's a lot <laughs> easier i think to write on your own because you're not fighting someone like i really like that though and right then, right but then again <laughs> maybe it wasn't good and you needed their input well, you, um, I mean, you taught, you just mentioned the, the zoom situation with all the, the, the person to person stuff kind of being shut down. Um, and I've had, I don't know exactly what this is, but, um, I've seen a number of things about it. You just got back out, right. Doing some touring and stuff, I guess the, uh, with this, uh, uh, Cirque Musica tour, that was um, my tour. Okay, so so what was that exactly, and where did you go? Because I think I saw some stuff down in Texas. If I'm not yeah, it was all wrong. over the U.S. It yeah, was, um, West Coast, East Coast, just went everywhere, and it was like a 45 date tour, and it was. I opened the show, and the Cirque Musica is like kind of like the circus, but no animals. They do like aerial stuff and all. Oh wow! Okay. I do a skit in between of things but um yeah i opened the show and it was interesting for first tour everybody was saying it's nothing like 
if you go on a regular, you know, open, open a tour for another artist. This one was ridiculously crazy because you had to go from one place to the next every day. There's only one day a week that we'd get off and it was just kind of crazy. But I got to go everywhere from California to Florida, New York and all over the place. So it was fun. Always got fun. to see a lot. I don't know. One one day off in a different place every day. That sounds like all of the touring I did. Is it really? <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, maybe it was. <laughs> yep. 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 Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, time for another performance here. Love the music again. You can visit her at uh, CallieTwistleman dot com, and of course, uh, closure the EP out there across uh, all the uh, digital platforms, wherever you stream, wherever you download music. And, of course, if you missed the live version today, you can check out the Backstage Pass YouTube channel and, of course, uh, Backstage Pass 409 for a replay today, too, as well. So definitely, if you got any questions for Callie, please leave them in the margin so we can get to them in the little comment box. And uh, what's up next? What are we going to hear? Missing you, another all track right. off of my EP. All right, here we go. Uh, all right. Sometimes I sit alone wondering where I would be if you never left. Sometimes I pretend that I don't feel a thing, but I come back to earth when I hear your name. I'm human, so I guess that it's okay. And here's what I gotta say. I miss the way that you look, the way that you talk, the way that you move. I miss all of you. I miss the way that we laugh at a joke you just got me and I got you. Babe, I hope you're doing good. I hope you're happy too. But it doesn't mean I'll stop ever missing you. Life seems to work in mysterious ways And God only knows why a heart has to break Well, it's all part of a bigger plan And I know someday I'll understand But I'm human, so I guess that it's okay To wonder why I feel this way I miss the way that you look, the way that you talk, the way that you move. I miss all of you. I miss the way that we laugh at a joke you just got. Me and I got you. Babe, I hope you're doing good. And I hope you're happy too. But doesn't mean I'll stop ever missing you. Bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. 
Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And back here on the air, of course, next week is CRS 2022, presented by Bangtail Whiskey. Uh, just some great shows. Craig Campbell, Shannon Doa, John Barry, Deborah Allen, and Caitlin Smith, just to name a few. It'll be partaking with us there at the Omni Hotel at, uh, of course, Nashville, Tennessee, February 23rd to 25th. Uh, yeah, Jeff, we got the Waffle House on the list. Uh, I'm sure it'll be an early morning cup of coffee and uh, a little breakfast there, too, before we head down to the hotel to set up because we're jam-packed. I think there's 35 shows in two and a half days. It's going to be busy out there huh. in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, no doubt. Again, thanks to Hank Jr. Productions, MitchMax.com, and Bangtail Whiskey. It's uh, Callie Twistleman here on the show, and the song was Missing You off the EP uh, Closure. Another fantastic uh, performance there, no doubt. Uh, I'm going to take an audience question here because I thought this is really cool. Uh, David tunes in all the way over across the pond in England because he tunes in a lot for the shows. And uh, I love this personal question because he always asks this, Callie. And I think that's uh, a really cool comment there. So tell us about that guitar. The guitar is. <laughs> and yeah, I like that. The guitar to her when she is writing and performing. Well, I use, I have a few different guitars. This one right here is a Gibson Hummingbird. And then I have a Gibson L00, which is the one I used on tour last, which is a smaller compact mm -hmm. body one. But they do have like, that's why I have so many different ones because they all have different sounds and they kind of help inspire different songs. And so, yeah, I'll pick up one and write something that I couldn't have written on the other one sort of thing. Uh, Taylor, of I also have some Taylors. Oh, Taylors? You know, speaking of the UK, I know there's a big, uh, your next one is going to be huge. I believe in March it's going to kick off. You're going to, you're going to go to Europe and do a big tour there, correct? Yes, it'll be my first time over there. I'm going to do the C2C, the London Country to Country Festival, and play a few shows over there, and it's pretty exciting. Oh, man. Wow. Let's be sure to keep us posted on that and uh, yeah. how much beer they drink over there. That's the number one question I have, too, how rowdy they get <laughs> and how great concerts are. I've never been to one over there, but I'd like to. I'd like to at well, least. I hear they love their country music. <laughs> <That's what I'm... laughs> yeah, I hear that too. At the same time, hey, I did a little uh, a little digging here, uh, and, and I, I wanted to make sure this is true because uh, you were handpicked, and, and one of the biggest honors yesterday for me to see was to see Mickey Guyton doing the national anthem at the Super Bowl. Uh, I mean, right there on the fifty yard line before the Rams and Bengals kicked off, you got handpicked to sing the national anthem and open for Bonnie Ray. Was that correct? Yes, that was my first time ever singing it when I was 10. <laughs> and then I kept doing it everywhere I could. Sing. That was like the only song I ever sang, wherever I sang in front of people. But <laughs> no, yeah, Mickey Guyton did an amazing job. So. She she really did. That too. song did you, can be tough. Uh, I'm sure it can. Did you get to meet Bonnie uh, after, I mean, opening for her, kind of after the show, before the show? Did you get to talk a little bit? I don't think, I don't think I got to meet her, but... Okay. That was such a long time ago. It's hard to <laughs> well, and I'm thinking as a 10 year old, it's probably, probably now you're much more impressed with the fact that you were involved with Bonnie Raitt than you would have been yeah. at 10. Cause now you realize what all she's done. Oh yeah. I had no idea. I yeah. Mean, I'm like, yeah. Hey, okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the things that's, that's so interesting about you know, the, the, the music business, the entertainment business is how you wind up crossing paths with all these different people. And, you know, but whether it's Bonnie Raitt in that example, um, I was looking at your music and I was like, boy, this is great. Her, her album's really taken off and, and, you know, she's got 500,000 spins on two hands and she's on track to double that with cowboy, but what is this 1.3 million <laughs> spins of together? And uh, so I looked, I looked that up to uh, not the kind of thing that would have typically been on my radar, but a lot bigger than a lot of people even understand. Um, talk about together and, and what that's kind of done for you. Yeah. Together kind of just kind of happened. My producer Aaron Pierce came to me and he was like, also my publisher at the time. And he is like, I have this song that is, it's being pitched to the My Little Pony movie and your voice would fit it so great. And I'm like, really? I love My Little Pony. So that was really neat. And I love the song. It's very upbeat and fun. And it's, it's definitely more pop. So that was fun to kind of change it up and 
do that, but I never thought it was going to be in like the millions of streams. There's just so many My Little Pony fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and it and it makes me wonder. I don't know the time frame for all of this, but uh, it also made me wonder if you were uh, growing up also a fan of the uh, High School Musicals oh, yeah. on Disney and all that, because I was looking at the projects like that. So many people that don't know about them, they think. Oh, they're just these silly little things, but they wind up getting involved with so many big name people. You know, what the, I saw the, I think the lead character was Vanessa Hudgens, who <laughs> people know to, from, go ahead. Oh yeah. I was saying, I watched her in the high school musical when she started out. So yeah. And she did, uh, I think she just did the live version of Grease and was in a Will Smith movie and and there's a lot of people in those projects. So you get to um, be exposed to a whole nother side of, of the industry by doing stuff like that. Right. Oh yeah. It was really neat. It's, it does open up things to even a different audience and yeah, just being a part of a, a soundtrack to a movie is pretty right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love that. And like you said, opportunities will come your way and those, those knocking at that door and you got to, uh, open one door and close another one, but take advantage of those when you get those, because you never know if you'll get those again. So congratulations on, on that endeavor, no doubt. All right. So I've reached the, the point in the show and I do have kind of a special request over here. So David, I'm going to ask that question, but first I've got to do a couple of uh, rapid fire questions that I want to do here with, with Callie here. So uh, there's been a lot of people telling me, and, and of course, Jeff's going to be kind of like my food director when I get there to Nashville, Hey, go here, go here, go here, try this, do this, do this. Is there a spot in Nashville, I guess, depending on the cuisine, that I have to try when I get there. Because first time I've been back there in about 20 years. You have to try it. Well, Hattie B's hot chicken. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> you have to try that. But don't get too hot of chicken because it can be, it can get pretty hot. There's like levels. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what else. Lots of good barbecue around okay. here. Although it is right. different than California. I'm used to like the tri-tip and stuff. So they have like mm -hmm. pork. <laughs> Lots of good food, though. Okay. <laughs> well, what's the uh, Cali Twistleman kind of go-to food when it's one of those days and you're like, man, I don't want to cook. I'm just going to go get this from this restaurant. And then, you know what? I'm going to put a glass of wine or a beer with it. What kind of what kind of goes hand in hand? I love Mexican food. So if either that or, you know, with a glass of wine, probably Maggiano's, some pasta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some carbs. <laughs> yeah. All right, so David, I'm going to ask this. Can't guarantee it, but let's see what we got here. All right, uh, so it's, it is her choice. It'd be dealer's choice. Uh, he wants you to sing another song on that guitar because he loves the sound there too. So I take these from the audience, uh, something else from the EP if you want to, and we'll come back and do a couple of questions and wrap it up. The EP? Um, I only had planned on two. I was All practicing right. those two. I wouldn't want to mess up. <laughs> All right. Well, I'd say, David, I asked there. No, no problem. Sir. But At least maybe you got he'll the... come to the London show. You said he's from UK. He's yeah, from the UK, right? From uh -huh. uh, Cumbria is where he's from. Cumbria in England there, too. So come uh -huh. to the show and... Yeah, go, come David. to the show. I'll play all kinds of songs. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I'm glad you practiced those two, no doubt, and it sound beautiful here on the air. All right, let's do a couple of more. Uh, if you won the lottery tomorrow, what's the first thing Kelly would do with the money? Oh, I would invest in a new house or some land. Okay. You, you can never go wrong with investing in land. <laughs> My dad taught me that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all just right. help some people out who need some extra okay. help. All right. The uh, if Kelly Twistleman was a spirit animal, what would her spirit animal be? A horse, of course. That would oh, there be you a go. Horse. <laughs> of course. She yeah. would be. She would be a little pony. A little pony. <laughs> yes. She's already got her soundtrack. Oh my gosh! All right, we love this one. Uh, is there a collaboration in the future that you're like, you know what? This would be the dream collaboration with this artist or band. And what stage would you like it to take place on? Is it country or any genre? Anything, anything, any genre. <laughs> well, I would say Ed Sharon would be amazing because he just, I love his songwriting and he gets billions of streams, so why not? But um, if it's country, lately I, I love Cody Johnson because he's got that oh. same vibe as me, you know, country guy and he's got a really neat voice. So, Texas boy, two. no doubt. Yep. <laughs> All right, we'll do a fill in the blank. Uh, most challenging part of the music business for Callie is. On the blank. Is 
keeping patient. <laughs> it takes a long time to get to where you might want to be, but it's also along the way you learn that it's just a process and you learn to enjoy it and what comes comes and little goals add up to the big ones. So that's what I'm yeah, we do. No doubt. Wait till you get to travel for three days to perform one song for three minutes on the tonight show. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And, you, and you'll go really add two planes, two days in the hotel. How long are we playing again? Three minutes. Yeah. All Perfect. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have patience. Hurry up and wait. I've heard a lot of people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No doubt. Well, I tell you what, we appreciate uh staying with us today. Glad we could put everything together. Uh tell justice, uh, thank you a lot too. Again, closures out there across all the digital platforms. New music is coming out on the horizon, and the big tour is kicking off in the UK in the month of March. She's gonna have a busy schedule, and she is right up there with the future of country music as far as ladies are concerned. Callie, we appreciate the time here on the show. And thank looking you. forward to catching up somewhere down the road. Yes, thank you so much. You got it. Good That's Gally Twistleman. Uh, tomorrow, Jeff uh, has a great show with a guy who's been on the opera before. Dallas Wayne's going to stop by and have new music to talk about there. And, of course, we'll have a great afternoon show. And then uh, this week, Ryan Griffin's going to stop by, Nashville recording artist. Looking forward to talking to him and all the great things going on in his camp, too, as well. Thanks to our sponsors. Next week, CRS. Jeff, book that morning at the Waffle House. We're going to be there, no doubt. And I'm looking forward to having a cup of coffee with you. <laughs> For everybody <laughs> that makes the show possible, we'll talk to you guys uh, tomorrow on the Backstage Pass. Until then, have a terrific night. We'll see you then.